Moving on, let me move over to the next module here. Uh, receiving is, is definitely one of the, 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 the most sought after because there's so many different options and so many different ways that people can do receiving. So as you can see, the first step that you're going to, uh, to want to tell the app, are you receiving against a PO or are you just receiving against a vendor? Um, I'm going to go through the option to receive against the PO. Uh, most of the customers do have that. Um, but you always have the option if for whatever reason a PO wasn't created, you can just say I'm going to receive these items against vendor one, two, three. Um, so when you select a yes that you want to receive against the vendor, first thing you're going to see is the vendor list. So these are all your vendors uh, that were imported from your database. When you select your uh, vendor, you're going to see only the open purchase orders that are available to have at least one open item remaining. So whether it's a first time receiving against or this is a, you know, the second time a, a vendor has sent you items, it will pull that information in here. So once you select your, your current, um, your current uh, vendor and your PO, you're just going to tap OK. Keep it toward the background that's building up those, those items. Um, so you can basically reconcile against that. So before I even scan the first item that I'm receiving against, if I just go over to list view, um, that's going to show me a list of all the items that I've scanned. Obviously, I've not scanned any so far. But what it does also show is everything that is on the PO, and then show me uh, the, the, the PO number over here. We've color co uh, coordinated the, the, the PO number just so the user can get a, a very clear idea of, of what's left, have they received anything, and so forth. And basically, the colors are, if it's in gray, like you see here, that means you've not received anything. In other words, that item has not been touched and there is an expected quantity. Um, I'll show you here shortly um, how that changes as, as you begin to receive. So just going back on this screen, I'm ready to start um, scanning my items. And of course, it's going to let me know if it's on the PO or not. In this case, it did not pop a message saying it was not on the PO. So obviously, it is. Um, as soon as you scan a barcode into the inventory, it's automatically it's going to put in a quantity of one. So as you can see, I'm just scanning the same barcode multiple times, but I can quickly move over to the next um, item and just scan that. So there's no save, there's no next or anything like that. So if I, if I scan a barcode two different times, it's going to have two different records of that scan, but it's going to add the, the quantities together. Um, if you would prefer not to type in or scan every item, you can just simply uh, scan it once and then put in whatever quantity you like and then immediately scan the next barcode. Upon scanning the next barcode, TB Inventory will automatically save that previous record, in this case, that orange juice and quantity of 28. And then you can, so you can toggle between scanning uh, whatever items that you want. So you, you're, not, you're not tied down to having to, um, to, uh, to, to scan a bunch of items back to back or put in the, the final quantity because TV inventory will always do the math for you. If you do not have a barcode or if the barcode somehow got uh, ripped or is, no, is not scannable, the fastest way to, to enter in an item is to type in menu and then add item. So by doing that, it's going to bring up this keypad that I can just type in the, the barcode that I'm receiving or the item number either way and they'll do a search and find that. So whether I manually enter an item or I scan an item, it's going to know right away if that item is not on the PO, and it's going to give you that message, just like CounterPoint will. Um, and that way you have the option to say, yes, I'm going to receive that anyway, or no, I don't want to receive that. Most of the customers, as you might imagine, you're going to receive that anyway. So it will add that to the receiver um, as part of, of what you're receiving today. The ellipsis up here on the top part of your screen here by the item number is going to take you to item lookup. So the same item lookup that you saw uh, just a moment ago, you have an option to do a search for your database. So if I type in a, a couple letters here and, and find, uh, find an item that I uh, want to receive against, it's going to, of course, let me know the, the item is on the PO and, and add it anyway, but it will allow me to do that. Um, going back, and you can toggle be between the scanning, manual entry, lookups, what have you. So you have all the, the different options available to you. If you scan an item that is not in your database, and, and this is where a lot of our customers find uh, that a vendor may have sent uh, an item that you ordered, but this is a brand new barcode. It could be from a different, uh, uh, different manufacturer or what have you. But if you know you want to add this 
barcode that I've just scanned to an existing item, I can just simply tap yes. Again, it'll take me to item lookup so I can find that item. I'm just going to use the same example here. So if I, if I uh, tap the item that I want, the same uh, message you saw before as far as the barcode type uh, will come in. And then if it has a different unit of measure, a case, dozen, what have you, you can do that. Um, so when you tap OK, it's going to go ahead and pull that item up. So what I'm doing here is, in addition to just receiving this item in whatever quantity, I'm also going to be adding this barcode, 70237, to my CounterPoint database as soon as I send this data over to CounterPoint. So it's kind of killing two birds at, at, at one time, so you're able to continue to receive. So the next time, obviously, someone scans barcode 70237, it will be associated with this. Um, what I was getting at earlier when in discussing the, the barcode is if the, this item already had a barcode UPC or barcode type 3, it will add to it. It will not overwrite any existing barcodes uh, that you have associated with any item. Um, now I'm going to my list view just so I can get an idea of what's already been scanned. This is going to show you everything that's been scanned. The, you have a date time stamp so you'll know exactly what time you scanned. This is very helpful if you get called away by a customer, um, you take a lunch break, what have you, you can immediately come back and see exactly what was the last item that you scanned. You can review your, your work here to see exactly what, uh, what, uh, what's been scanned, what hasn't been. Um, you know, let's see, this orange juice uh, small here has, uh, has you know, this one scanned of 28 and this one of 1 and so forth. If you want to just to get a quick idea of, of how many the total are, I can just tap on the link here, which is going to bring the item back up. And it will show me the total of 30 has, has been scanned at some point. And however it does the math, whether you scan that same barcode 30 times, or in this case, one record of 28 and two others of one each, it's always going to do the math for you. If I see a mistake has been made and I didn't mean to scan 28, but instead I meant to do 2, um, I could quickly make a, an adjustment here, um, just tap anywhere on the screen right here, and then it's going to save that new record. So now by going back to list view, it's going to show that new quantity of uh, where to go up here too. And so of course um, the, the, the correct total, um, the 4, is now going to be sent back to CounterPoint. Um, back on the list view, if I see I made a, an error and I scanned something or I manually entered something that was incorrect, I can highlight it and then just tap menu and then delete. It will only delete one record at a time. It's by design will not allow you to delete more than one item. So you always have the ability to, to go back and, and check your work. Over on the Reconcile tab, um, as you can see, things have changed quite a bit um, because the red always indicates that I've under-received this item. So I'm expecting a lot, 120, and I've only received four. Um, on this particular item, uh, this was the one that was not on the PO. So it's anything that's over the quantity expected is going to be highlighted in blue. Um, if I had something that was matched, so in other words, if this was uh, quantity three and I'm expected three, this would have been in black. So th this is really intended to, for the user to check his or her own work to make sure that everything looks correct um, you know, before they send the data back to CounterPoint. Um, if I'm ready to go, um, if I'm connected wirelessly, then I can just go ahead and hit the send button. If I'm not, then it's just a matter of coming back to the workstation, hitting menu send, and then it'll send that data. So every module, physical count, et cetera, as you'll see, will have that menu send option straight from that module. So you can finish your work and then immediately just send the data back out. I'm going to give you a quick little summary of, of what was sent, I'll show you the total quantity, show that I've inserted one barcode. And I have zero errors, which obviously is what you want. Um, so back over on CounterPoint, let's see if I have CounterPoint pulled up. I'm able to just show you. A lot of you are probably familiar with CounterPoint and the posting process, and I'm not going to go too far into that. But it will it will send the data back to CounterPoint. And it'll be in a uh, a, a ready to receive or, or post. So you always have the ability to review your work or your employees employees work. Really what I wanted to stress is TubeInfoid follows the counterpoint uh, quality control measures of having that posting process. So even if your employee made a big accident or, or you know, there was some error, it would not mess up your database until you, until you or, or whoever's in charge, a manager, owner, what have you, had the ability to, uh, to post that data. Um, let me see if I can get back over to the ticket screen. I'm sorry, the, the receiving screen here real quick.
and my counterpoint's acting slow here. Um, oh, I've got my ticket window coming up. Apologize for that. So most of you are probably familiar with the receiving process. So um, instead of going in and entering a brand new receiver, um, what's going to happen is have the ability to, to look and see all the receivers. And so this is the one that we just did right here. So if I know that I did this work or I trust that employee and I'm ready to go, I can just post it right away. But if I need to review his or her work and make sure that everything looks correct or if I need to make an edit, you can always make a, an edit right here um, uh, on, the, on, the, on the back end in CounterPoint. So it's never going to automatically uh, update your data. So we want to follow those quality control functionalities that CounterPoint has built in. Um, the receiving against a just a vendor it works very much the same way. You're just obviously not going to have a PO to uh, to uh, to match up and reconcile against. 